Welcome back to Why in the Morning. And if it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can equally find me across all my socials. So having an experienced mentor you can rely on uh, in, your, in, the, in your business, it's actually a boost especially if he's one or she's one <laughs> in that being just gender sensitive that they hold an uh, experience in coaching and training so it's definitely a win for you to get mentorship in all aspects so in studio i am joined by peter ongera uh, who is a business trainer coach and a mentor thank you very much peter for creating time to be with us thank you so happy much. holidays how are you doing merry christmas <laughs> merry christmas <laughs> to you peter so peter if i've missed out on anything from your uh, titles because you're a man of many titles probably we could add a few uh not exactly i mean <laughs> uh, that's a summary of everything and in in, in entrepreneurship you, you look, you're looking at how you you can solve problems mm -hmm. by combining solutions so mm -hmm. that's the best that i can you've done and that's the best for for me and for everyone i'm glad i did justice to, to your yes, name yes yes you are a good student <laughs> so <laughs> i give you an a ah, thank you <laughs> yeah. so starting us off i'd like to find out what is the difference between coaching uh, a business coach a business trainer and also a mentor basically training is when you get a skill I mean, for example, I can train you to drive. Okay. And then coaching is where there's someone, mm -hmm. somewhat, someone, somebody trying to tell you how to drive. All right? Then mentorship is there's somebody you're looking up to. You oh, might wow. not be on the field. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, uh, in soccer, for example, mm -hmm. you have teams train. They go into camps and they train. Then they come to the field to play. Mm -hmm. And then you see the coach. Okay. But probably... These players have people in their heads, in their minds, that they would want to be, for example, Maradona or whoever. Mm -hmm. So that's the big difference. Okay. So there's training where you get a skill. You get the skills. Then there's coaching where somebody is now telling you, do this, do that. For example, in this program, there's probably, you went to college to get training. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, as we are doing this recording, there's somebody probably directing you on what to ask, when to ask, how to ask. Mm -hmm. And then there's probably, that's a coach, then there's probably someone you're looking up to, probably a veteran broadcaster, a veteran um, TV personality. All right. Yes. What does it take to be a coach? Uh, it takes experience. You cannot give what you don't, you don't have. Mm -hmm. Experience, whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. So it's basically experience and the skills that you have learned or gained, and uh, mainly and knowledge. All right. Yeah, because you cannot give what you don't have. Okay. Yes. So what you're saying is if I'm running a business or who is eligible to be needing a coach in terms of uh, if I'm running a business, am I the only one who needs a coach or if I have a business idea, can I look for a coach? So who is eligible to Everybody, you need coaches everywhere because mm -hmm. um, one thing is that business is, um, is, I can say, business changes. So for example, like I like giving an example of... Um, information technology for example mm -hmm. we used to go to the cyber cafes to do internet but right now you have your cell phone mm -hmm. that you can use uh, your cell phone to browse the internet you have your cell phone to even do uh, financial transactions mm -hmm. so at end level of business you need a coach at end level of business you need training for example someone needs to train you on how to do uh, tax returns for example okay you need someone to coach you on how to start for example a software that probably um, can help you get the pricing correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So you need a, co a coach, a trainer, and a mentor. They're all essential in one's life. Exactly. All right. We, we can call them um, advisors. Okay. Yeah, or consultants. All right. So far, I believe that we are on the same page and we have break it down in an easy way so that our viewers can understand. All right. So for someone who's looking for coaching services and also looking for you as a trainer, so how much, take us through the process of maybe the little bit of a basic of, of what you take them through in terms of coaching. Let's start with coaching. Basically, it depends on what level of coaching is needed. For mm -hmm. example, if you're a startup, for example, okay. you have a business idea or you have this grand idea mm -hmm. of uh, solving some problem. Mm -hmm. So you need somebody to tell you how to start, how to get started, how to name your business. 
For mm -hmm. example, if you want mm -hmm. to get into, say, mm -hmm. uh, catering business, you don't have to call your business Mitishamba mm -hmm. Foods and something. So you need, at, at that level of startup, you need how to know how to start the business, how to name that business, how to protect that business in terms of copyright, in terms of uh, business registration, in terms of getting to set up the business. You don't have to use all the money that you have, you've gotten to probably get um, a furniture for your business when your main business, the core business, is to provide food. So basically from there, it depends on where you are. If you're starting up, you need a coach, a trainer, or a mentor on starting up. If you're expanding, you also need someone to teach you how to expand, for example, into the East African market or the international market. So it is from different stages of your business. Exactly, exactly. It's okay. not like cast on stone that this is for this. Oh, it's but like a one-time thing. Yeah, and it's forever. It's, it's, forever. it's lifetime, yeah. All right. Earlier on, you say that uh, you cannot give what you don't have in terms of being a coach. So take us through a couple of experiences, your first business startup and what you're doing right now. Um, mine is a long one, and, 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 and I encourage uh, you, your audience to, to probably copy what I did or okay. what I've done. Mm -hmm. um, I started off when I was around age 10. I was selling sweets when I was in primary school. Wow, that's very young. Uh, that's very young yes, age. yes. I mean, I mean bis you can start business at, at any age, mm -hmm. at 10, 15, 20, 30, and all that. And then I got into business. When I, w I went into high school, for example, I used to save my pocket money. I went to a rural high school and all the pocket money I used to be given my, by my parents, I would save, I would take to the school canteen mm -hmm. and another canteen outside the school so that every weekend when we're having that free walk, I get a few mandazis. But when we're going back, to, uh, back home, I go to the, the business person mm -hmm. where I've invested my money mm -hmm. to get all my money back. Yes. So from that is the basic. That's where it all started. Yes, 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 yes. Right. So how did it transition from uh, now you're doing it in a in a level whereby you're not just a qualified coach, but you've said we've done a couple of other several businesses. Let's look at uh, after that. What did you do next? After that, now then I there's a, one aspect of um, life. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, really changed my life. Okay. It's voluntary work. All right. So when I got into university, mm -hmm. I got into voluntary work. I was a peer counselor. Mm -hmm. And then out of that, I also did, um, you know, when you get into voluntary work, you're out to get either gain skills mm -hmm. or gain um, experience. Mm -hmm. So while I was doing this voluntary work, I realized that, you know, counseling is almost coaching. People don't even realize that. Mm -hmm. Counseling basically is coaching. So you're telling, um, for example, my, your fellow students, because I was a peer counselor, so you're talking to your peers and, on um, ma matters of uh, sexual health, matters of financial management and all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But then, now, when you're doing voluntary work, you really get either no pay, but you're mm -hmm. paid in kind. Mm -hmm. Kind is, for example, the experience you gain. Mm -hmm. This is where I got a chance to be picked by the university to attend an exchange program, youth exchange program in Japan in 1994. And part of that uh, exchange program, it was a requirement, it was mandatory for us to do homestay. So homestay is basically, we were taken to a host family in Japan and uh, we stayed there to, to learn how the Japanese people behave, how they eat, what they eat and all that. But then um, out of my business mind and business um, um, approach, I wanted to find out why did this family host us? Was it for free or was it for pay? I realized they were being paid by the government mm -hmm. to host us. We were about 300 of us from all over the world. So there was curiosity. Exactly. Uh -huh. So then when I finished the program, I came mm -hmm. back to Kenya and uh, now set up that homestay business. It's called African Homestay and Safaris, whereby in my business, I encourage tourists, mm -hmm. people from other cultures to get into people's homes so that they can learn more. The same way I did in Japan. 
Oh, wow. Yes. And it's actually a nice way to just uh, integrate and learning different cultures. But before we get into your twin travel company, let's go back to uh, the voluntary work. And I would like you to tell us, do you feel like uh, the voluntary space is also a uh, good place where probably graduates from universities can uh, get into these spaces? And is, it, is there an opportunity whereby you can get employment out of just volunteering? You know, one of the, 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 the key areas, like for example, when looking for a job, mm -hmm. they ask for experience. Mm -hmm. So if you're fresh from college, where is the experience? You can earn the experience by doing voluntary work. You can, you can call it internship or attachment. Okay. But voluntary work, in most, most employers, most employers look for that spirit of voluntary work. And you know, when you're doing voluntary work, away from internship. Internship is like forced, you know, mm -hmm. you, are, you have to do this you and that. You have to do it to graduate. Exactly, <laughs> to graduate, to yes. get credit. Mm -hmm. But voluntary work is a, a different way of, I call it, it's entrepreneurship. It's not, you know, it's not like, you know, the internship where you're told, okay, fine, go do this for three months. But you can volunteer to either, either gain a skill, mm -hmm. to get experience. And again, somebody who has done voluntary work, mm -hmm. voluntarily, mm -hmm. has a higher chance of getting any job done or any job um, given to him or her. What are a couple of tips you'll tell us in terms of in the voluntary workspace that would help uh, any young person to position themselves for opportunities such as in employment per se? For example, if your passion is in accounts, mm -hmm. in, in, let's say in, in, in finance, mm -hmm. and um, you, you, you really want to, to get into that space, voluntary work would help you a lot because now, if you are voluntary, you are doing voluntary work in, let's say, in a finance company, mm -hmm. the people who are working there for you or the people you work with will be more interested in helping you out to gain more experience, more skills and exposure. Okay. Then, for example, when you are doing internship and you are so many of you, so many of you, let's say, from one college, and there's so little supervision, but with voluntary work, they know this person is here to, because of his own, um, say, um, his own uh, willingness. So the willingness to help mm -hmm. is the kind of willingness they will help you with to gain the experience and to get the required skills. All right. Yes. There's also situations whereby uh, you'll find a young person has volunteered in a space they have actually studied it or they are interested, but they lack those particular opportunities uh, in that particular space. When is the time to actually identify it's time to move on and seek other opportunities? I like giving my personal example. Um, when I was in college, I did sociology and philosophy. Mm -hmm. Those days, we didn't have undergraduate in mass communication. I really wanted to be a journalist. So what I did is volunteer as a journalist. I started writing for the, the university magazines. I started writing for national print media. Mm -hmm. And then I got into now the mainstream media, which uh, actually, um, for, for, for lack of better word, <laughs> I left. Because mm -hmm. one is I saw the kind of stories I was writing. Mm -hmm. I was writing about people doing great projects people solving problems, people getting experience, then I said, wow, this is something nice. It's something I can move away from and do. And I can tell you, there are people who have done voluntary work mm -hmm. simply because they lack a space where they can gain some particular skill. You and I know of people in politics, for example, who have volunteered with political parties during campaigns and all that. But right now, you find them they are, some of them are senators. Yes, that's true. We can, we can name a few. Yes. Others get nominated into parliament, into the county assemblies. Mm -hmm. So voluntary is one, is one space that mm -hmm. young people really need to, to capture, to get into, to gain what probably they are passionate about. All right. Yes. Now let's get into business and uh, <laughs> in the aspect of just starting a business. Before anyone starts a business, it's important to identify the problem you're solving in the market. I was telling earlier on about the story of uh, Vusin the Bequire, saying you have to identify a problem so that, you, so that you can actually solve it. Talk to us on how 
you actually identify a space in the market and how to go about filling in, filling the gap? You know, um, in, in, in business or in uh, this, uh, actually, uh, if I can take you back, there is mm -hmm. a, a difference between entrepreneurship and business. Okay. Um, entrepreneurs are people who come up with ideas, mm -hmm. and they can also convert the idea into a business. Mm -hmm. And we have business people. Mm -hmm. Business people are out to make profit. It's rarely <laughs> that you find that a business person is an, is an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So the idea that you can pick up, for example, a businessman can use it to make profit. Mm -hmm. For example, um, Zoom. Zoom is a platform where people do online classes. Mm -hmm. The inventor of Zoom came up with the idea. But now the people using Zoom to have classes and they charge, they pay, they ask for payment to do those classes. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, if, say, I like giving the example of a cell phone. The initial cell phone was for, for voice. Mm -hmm. You call and you receive a call, you make a call. Then it got improved into SMS, short message service. You can send a text, you can receive a text. Then we got a cell phone that has a camera. So you can do recording of you know, your event, mm -hmm. you can take photos, you can share photos. Mm -hmm. But right now, you can, your phone is a bank. Mm -hmm. Your phone is, 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 is something that you can do classes on. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a college, yeah. it's a university. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to, 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 to school, for example, like the, during COVID. Most schools, in fact, all schools were shut. Mm -hmm. But people are doing classes using the cell phones. Yes. So it has made things way easier, portable. You can just uh, do everything at the comfort of your home, wherever you are, on your phone. Very true. You give us a dif uh, the difference between uh, business and entrepreneurship, which is very quite very important. What does it take to start up a business? It's number one. It takes some um, creativity mm -hmm. and innovation and a sense of knowing what is lacking, a sense of knowing what you can solve. Mm -hmm. If you lack those, then I don't think you can be a good business person uh -huh. or be good in entrepreneurship because you are out to identify a problem, an existing problem. You are out to identify and fill the gap. If you're not able to see that, mm -hmm. then I don't think you are able to make it in business. All right, Peter, you know we are so much uh, uh, gracious to have in studio. So I'm going to ask every single question for the sake <laughs> of <laughs> the entrepreneurs back at home. So as business owners, so if you are starting a business, yeah, and you're in the early stages of your business and you, there's no returns, they're not coming, how can we be patient and uh, just still and uh, still be productive while at it? I like the, the, the way you use the word pa pa be patient. Mm -hmm. Patience pays. Mm -hmm. In fact, Rome and most of these big cities were never built in one day. Mm -hmm. And you cannot go to the farm and plant seeds and harvest the following day. Mm -hmm. You have to plant the seed, wait for it to germinate. Uh, you can do the weeding mm -hmm. and then expect to harvest. Mm -hmm. You cannot even go to college as young people. Mm -hmm. You can't go to college today and you graduate tomorrow. So you have to have that sense of patience. Mm -hmm. Nothing grows overnight. Nothing. Okay. So everything else needs patience. And as you said, patience pays. Okay. So if you want payment, be patient. Oh, well. We will be patient. <laughs> <laughs> but again, again, let nobody cheat you or uh -huh. tell you you will be leaders of tomorrow. We are not going to be leaders of tomorrow? You are a leader right now. Oh, yeah, that's true. So no, at, no any, at any level you are, mm -hmm. you are in leadership. There is business leadership, there is civil society leadership. You don't have to wait to be a member of parliament or you don't have to wait to have a million Kenya shillings to start a business, or you don't have to wait to have 10 university degrees mm -hmm. and then you, you run for parliament. Okay, so it's, it's right to say that you are, you are a leader right now, but you're just growing while at it, yes. leadership. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, earlier on you mentioned that coaching, uh, business coaching is uh, quite like the same of counseling um, when you're talking to someone. And most of the time when, uh, when you're talking to I've been gracious enough to, to talk to a counselor. So there's always the aspect of uh, being cautious if this person has your best interest at heart or they're just after it's 
profession for them. It's a business like any other, any other business. So how do you identify the right coach, trainer, or even a mentor for, for your business if you're approaching someone to help you out? And that's a good point. In most cases, some of the smartest, the best coaches are never paid. Mm -hmm. Because one, whenever they teach, they learn. Whenever they give out the lessons, they also, get less, they also gain lessons. And that's why I'm telling you, the people get in coaching and they have misinterpreted coaching. Mm -hmm. So they charge for coaching, they charge for anything else that they, 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 they're supposed to do almost for free. And some of them, you might find that they are probably mm -hmm. not the very best. As I told you, experience the best teacher. So for, for one to, 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 to say, okay, fine, this one is charging per hour, this one is charging per day, this one is charging for, that is his business, mm -hmm. business of coaching. But I can tell you for sure, most coaches, business coaches, are affordable. Okay. Yes. All right. So I have a question here. So someone is asking, if I'm your client, how would you help me refine my talents, goals, and decisions for the success of my business? It's very easy. You have to, we have to share. We sit down, tell me what your ambitions are, your goals are, and then I take you through how you can either probably, because again, it's in, in, in business coaching, I don't have to be your boss. Okay. That's why I told you, for example, in soccer, in football, the coach doesn't play. Wait, well, sure. <laughs> the coach doesn't get into the field and play, but he's out there trying to, you know, to tell you what to do, when to do it, and when the time for substitution comes, he calls the referee and says, okay, fine, I think this player here is, uh, is not doing well. So basically, it's all about guiding, mm -hmm. advising you on your idea. Okay. So yes. it all falls back to me as a person. It's you as a person. So coming to you and uh, we're looking for a strategy just to maneuver for the sake of the success of my business. What are the key areas that you, that you look at? The best one is uh, I need to know why you're in business. Mm -hmm. The reason you're in business. There are mm -hmm. several reasons. I could give up to 25 reasons. There are people get into business to make money. Mm -hmm. There are people get into business as a form of employment. There are people get into business, for example, if say your, your spouse is jobless mm -hmm. and you have a job and you don't want your spouse to be idling in the, in, in the, in the, in the estate or uh, whatever mm -hmm. uh, in your home, mm -hmm. you probably think that you can mm -hmm. open a business for your spouse. Most my, to keep this, them occupied, to have something to do. You see? You see? Yes. So it becomes very difficult for me, for example, if let's say it's your wife that you have opened, opened up a boutique business. Mm -hmm. And probably you think maybe you work in a bank and you're nicely dressed, so you think that your wife can sell nice clothes for the bank managers. And probably your wife, your wife is good in teaching. Mm -hmm. When, for example, if your wife would be nice having a business in teaching kids. Okay. But now you think for her that she can do well in selling decent dresses and decent, uh, you know, office, office wear. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, what, what, what you're looking at is why are you in business? Are you solving a problem? Are you getting self-employment? Are you investing the, the extra purpose. money that you have? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that you have to understand. If you don't understand it, you get it wrong. Oh, interesting. Yes. Very interesting. Let's dive into emotional intelligence, yes. right? So, and how it affects our careers and business and what we can, you know, do about it. Because most people when get into business, they become attached. There's so much emotional and attached to their business, holding on, holding on to, you know, what they have. So... Let's look at emotional intelligence and how we can handle that in our careers and also in our business, if you are running one. You know, it's all, it all boils down to, to passion. We are advised, we do what we are passionate about. The example I gave you of um, a spouse selling clothes instead of opening a school for training. So the attachment is the passion. Are you passionate about what you're doing, if you're not, then probably you are in the wrong field. Mm -hmm. So it all boils down, down to 
what you're passionate about, the passion. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Another question here we have. So let's look at when you're dealing with uh, business startups, that is, or wannabe business owners in a situation like that. So what are the biggest conflicts? Uh, uh, what's holding the What's the biggest conflict? What's holding them back when it comes to the business aspect of it? And uh, what should we actually watch out for? Uh, peer pressure is one. For example, if, say, I did um, a law degree, for example, my peers, my friends, even my parents, even the society would want me to get into law practice. And probably I'm looking at making money. I can give you an example of um, a dentist that I know of. Um, the dentist had his uh, son go into dentist, uh, you know, college. He did all the programs in, uh, in, in dental, whatever, dental um, training. But he was not into, um, say, you know, getting s the smells of people's mouths. He didn't want to do that. So he got into matatu business. And every time uh, the parent asked, what are you doing now? Oh, you know, I need uh, equipment. I need an office for this and that. But then this guy, all he wanted was office space to run his matatu business. So the parent, what he did is that he opened up a dental clinic for his son to do uh, den uh, dental work. He bought all the equipment from abroad, everything else. The clinic was well set in a very nice area. So, and every time he would uh, ask the son, how is the business? He says, it's doing well. So one day, um, the father decides to visit the clinic. And he finds, um, this was the, the time when we had um, Matatu crew adorning, uh, you know, uniform. So when he got to the clinic, he finds, uh, Matatu, you know, uh, dressed, people dressed in a Matatu crew uniform. And it, it was like, so are these your clients? Now, the son did not want to embarrass his dad. He said, no, these are my clients. He said, no, my son, you cannot do this because these guys don't earn much. He didn't know those were his employees. He had opened, mm -hmm. he had started a, a Matatu business. Okay. He had several matatus and every morning or evening these guys would come and you know do reports for the day bring cash for the day and all that mm -hmm. in the dental clinic that his dad thought mm -hmm. was for um for for dental work but because as, as as you asked that kind of um whatever is holding you back yes comes from either your peers or your parents or the society. Pressure. Exactly, yeah. All right. So the guy did very well in, uh, in Matatu business and uh, he was not asking for money from, the, from dad and all that mm -hmm. until now um, when um, dad discovered he was not doing um, uh, dental work, mm -hmm. um, he said, okay, fine, if that is your passion, go on. But now uh, give me the money that I used to buy, which is the equipment and for the office. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Now, take us through uh, what you, your company deals with the tour and travel in details, because it's quite unique and the market gap, the market space you saw in the, in the, in the, in the, in the market, in the, the industry, gap that yeah. you saw in the market, and how you dealt with it and came up with the tour and travel company. Just take us through that. It's very simple. What I do is my company does this. Mm -hmm. We identify homes, mm -hmm. ordinary homes. Our clients don't get into hotels. So the ordinary homes that the ones we, we spent in Japan, we identify homes that are safe and secure for the tourists to mm -hmm. come and stay. Okay. And we also get tourists who are willing to be hosted in these ordinary homes for purposes of uh, learning more about culture, for purposes of saving. So most of them are low budget. And sometimes most of them are for long term. For example, if you were to spend in a hotel for one month, it would be very expensive for you. Mm -hmm. But if you did that in an ordinary home, homestead and all that, it's, it's, it's affordable. I don't say it's cheap. It's mm -hmm. affordable. It's enriching. Okay. So what my company does is to link up guests with hosts. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's almost, uh, say, 
Airbnb, mm -hmm. but it, that came later. But that's for bread and breakfast. All right. But my company um, links up the students, sorry, the guests who are mainly students and volunteers mm -hmm. who come, for example, and stay in a country. And it's not a matter of just staying. They can take part in any cultural or socioeconomic uh, activities around the homestead. Mm. So, for example, if you have students coming in from, say, Canada, mm -hmm. I organize for them mm -hmm. to stay in a rural home whereby they can learn the history of that, um, say, uh, the, the county they are staying in. They can learn the culture of the, the county, for example, and they're able to interact with the people around uh, the home where they're staying. All right. Yes. Interesting. Very, very interesting. In the aspect of uh, your guest being concerned about their safety, do you run any background check for, for the place where they're going to stay? That's mandatory. Mm -hmm. That's mandatory. Because, again, you don't have to expose um, the guest to any dangers. So you have also to make sure you know the home they're going to stay. You have to know the people they're staying with, probably. And, again, you have to know who the guests are. Sometimes we forget. Probably these are crooks coming in mm. to be hosted. So you also do both background check for the guest and for the host. And different temperaments of people, different personalities, how yeah, do you deal yeah, with that? Yeah, there is, there, there is a form they have to fill out. Ah, okay. So you have to get to know why you're hosting, for example, mm. what is your experience with hosting, mm. or, or, you know, because you, you, you never know. You never mm. know. You have to be very sure mm -hmm. than to be very sorry. All right. Yes. So 2020 has been a year of uh, economical hard times, especially due to the global pandemic COVID-19. And uh, in the same year, during the recession, there are businesses which have been actually doing well. Uh, let's look at in 2021, courtesy of COVID-19, because there's always the bad side of every situation and also the, the good side of it. So courtesy of COVID-19, what are the couple of businesses that, that you see that will do well in 2021? Wow. Prophecy. Okay. <laughs> um, we, we're, we're getting into um, information technology. Yes. And we're getting into changing of lifestyles. What people were doing before 2020 is not what they'll do in 2021. So you have really to make sure you know what people will need in 2021. Mm -hmm. Most of us, when COVID got us here, most of us were selling vegetables using our very expensive uh, vehicles. Most of us got into training and got into training and coaching. Most of us found ourselves jobless. Mm -hmm. Most of us found ourselves earning half salary. So 2020 is a year to reset, to readjust, mm -hmm. so that we know, for example, if I was doing uh, teaching, for example, I can do something else. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, even as a Christian, even the Bible says you have to invest more than one. Mm -hmm. In fact, they say seven. Mm -hmm. You have to invest in seven ways. You have to have multiple streams of income. Exactly. All right. Yes. So, uh, in the holiday season and uh, in the festive mood, people are looking to celebrate with friends and family. Uh, what would be your advice when it comes to expenditure in terms of finances? Uh, spend less, invest more, mm -hmm. save more, mm -hmm. because this is not the, the last holiday. We have very many coming up. We have uh, schools opening in January. We need school fees. We need um, businesses to, to start again in, in January. Mm -hmm. And as you realize, we really, the economy was very bad during COVID. Most mm -hmm. business shut and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, spending less and uh, investing more and saving more is what I can advise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As we wrap up, a uh, couple of tips that you can give to business owners and people who want to get into business that actually can uh, increase their sales. Just a little bit of tips. I know you have them as a business coach. <laughs> uh, the very best is that look at um, the, the problems. Mm -hmm. If you are able to solve a problem, then you are able to make it. Mm -hmm. If there's no problem to be solved, mm -hmm. then you have no reason to be in that business. Do a, do a research again. <laughs> do it. Do it again and again. Go back Just, to the drawing board. Exactly. Uh -huh. For example, if, as, you, as you've seen clearly, we have supermarkets moving out of the CBD mm -hmm. into the villages. That's true. So they're solving that. So you don't have to come into the CBD to come up with another big supermarket. Mm -hmm. People hate moving around with shopping baskets around mm -hmm. the CBD. Mm -hmm. People don't want to have... Um, products closer to their homes or where, where they work or where they stay. Right. People are doing online deliveries. So you probably you need a warehouse and a delivery person 
mm-hmm. and an online platform where they can do payment, where they can do orders and all that. Okay. Yes. So how can people find you on social media accounts and also your own travel company? How can they access it uh, on social media handles? Um, Peter Ongera everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my travel company is African Homestay and Safaris. Across all social media? Everywhere. Okay. Yes. It's, Pe- it's simple and <laughs> short. <laughs> Repeat the name of the, the twin travel company. African Homestay and Safaris. Africa Homestay and Safaris. Yes. Simple. Yes. Across all social media handles. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter Ongera, for creating time to be with us. Thank you so much. So I'm looking forward to have more of this kind of conversation in the near future. Uh, probably next year. Absolutely. <laughs> so yes, thank you guys. Now, next week is uh, Christmas, I think. Okay. Thank yes. you very much, Peter. Thank you guys for watching this conversation. So that is Peter Ongera, who is a business trainer, coach, and a mentor. Make sure you follow up with him and get to learn much more. In terms of uh, starting a business, if you're in one, how to scale up your business, at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. At Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. We'll be right back. Don't touch that dial. Thank you.